Hey everybody, it's Mike Yow again with Savage Kingdom's role-playing game and Fire in the Head Productions. It's been a while since I've done a video, so I thought I would do one today. I don't know, it's been two or three, two or three weeks. The last one was a live play of Savage Kingdom, so hopefully you guys checked it out. Episode 35, 36, or whatever of this long learning, uh, long running uh, Blood Crown campaign that I've been running for my in-person players here in the beautiful mountains of Western North Carolina. Um, I did have a new camera I was testing. I was doing a, I was just doing this video on a new camera like 10 minutes ago, but it was like too jarring. It was like too new. It was like HD and my head was giant. It was like a continual close up instead of a medium close up, which is what I kind of prefer. Uh, so I just went back to the old tech, uh, which is pretty much me in a nutshell. I, I, old tech almost always seems to be better than new tech, but hey, that's a generalization, and I could be wrong. So I wanted to do this video just to kind of catch people up on what's going on in my life, especially the game design world, but also as an actor or whatever. I know that's probably the boring part to most of you, but some people care. Um, but it's mostly just a kind of a nutshell to um, just kind of let you know what's going on. Starting, first of all, with Savage Kingdom's Heroic Adventures. That's the book that was kickstarted uh, recently, or fairly recently. It's not even that recent anymore, which is about what I'm about to get into. So I'm about 60% of the way right through writing it, right? At this point in time, when the original uh, project kicked off and we and we made uh, enough money to actually do it, um, barely, but we did it. Uh, we've got enough, just enough money to kind of make it work. Um, at this point in time in early November, it should have either been done or probably like 90% through. So I'm about 60, so I'm 30% behind, right? Uh, maybe a little bit more, honestly. So, and the reason I apologize right up front, uh, I'm still working on it. So I got super behind because a lot of things came up. Life happened, as people know. Um, I'm an actor on the side as well, or not on the side. That's really my main job. And a tour guide as well, which, which in storytelling does a lot of acting type stuff anyway. Um, and I teach acting and I teach improv and, and fight choreography and all this stuff. Uh, so the game design stuff is really my second, my tertiary job and I, I barely really call it a job i mean i probably make maybe fifty dollars a month doing it maybe a hundred dollars a month uh when i sell a book or two or whatever um so that's needless to say it being a, a tertiary profession really just a glorified hobby that's had to kind of take a back seat um my uh my wife got laid off from her her sort of real job i hate to say real job because she's an actress as well as and i we consider that much more real than a lot of other jobs honestly uh, but she did get laid, laid off from her more dependent day job. And so we have had to pick up more gigs and stuff and stay busy and crazy and like that. Meaning that there hasn't been as much time to write and design as I have been wanting to uh, here and there. Um, and, I, and honestly, I got a little burned out at some point with Heroic Adventures, even Savage Kingdoms in general. And that's why I was working kind of hard on Red Sun. Uh, but now I'm kind of come back. It's the ebb and flow of life, right? I'm sure I'm not the only person who goes through that. Uh, and I'm kind of back and back in the SK mode again, um, seeing that it's almost like whenever I kind of almost, I wouldn't say give up on Savage Kingdoms because I still run Savage Kingdoms for players. And I still try to, you know, sell a book or two. I just don't really promote it that much. Um, but once I kind of fall out of rhythm with it and I'm almost ready to not really abandon it, but just kind of ignore it. It kind of comes back like somebody, I get a cool email from somebody in Australia or someone in China that plays or or, or the United States or Korea. Uh, and they're like, man, this is so awesome. And it just reminds me that maybe there's only 100 people across the globe playing the game. But it, those hundreds seem to be, or at least 50, 50 of those hundred maybe, seem to be very loyal fans. Um, and I've kind of said this before, and I, you know, I think some people think I'm either joking or maybe even being a little arrogant where... I've made a, a mention that Savage Kingdom's tiny independent game, tiny drop in the RPG bucket, but the fans that like it are super loyal and super into it. And that's, I don't think that's, that's being pretty accurate. And that's very cool. Uh, and that shows me that I think the design is pretty good. I mean, I've detected plenty of flaws, obviously. Uh, any creator, designer, artist, do, you know, does a work of art or whatever, design something, craft something, and it's like, yeah, it, it, you're lucky if you feel like you're about 80% uh, successful with it, right? Because you always find little cracks and flaws and stuff like that as you 
as you're uh, after you're done with it or whatever and or and or continue to use it such as savage kingdoms because i do continue to run it uh and as the game master and game designer uh, almost every session that i run i wouldn't say every session but every several sessions i find some little tiny flaw or some little thing that i wished i would have not necessarily a flaw but i wish i would have approached it in a different way but two or three years ago four years ago five actually seven seven and a half of the first edition came out at that moment in time that was to me the right decision to do and then maybe seven years later you're just you're in a different part of your life and you're just like wow I, why did that's kind of a weird rule uh and then i find myself house ruling my own rules which is kind of hilarious actually i only do like i've only maybe house rule like two or three of them honestly i let most of it fly the overall point is that i feel like the design of the world is good enough for there to be a few solid fans uh, and the reason that it's not a bigger game, because I just don't have the money for budgeting for promotional. And like I said, I don't really promote it that much. There's a website I haven't even updated in two, two and a half years. SavageKingdoms.net, by the way, if, you want to, if anybody's ever gone there. Uh, there's the Facebook company page, which, you know, I'm kind of on. I probably pay more attention to that than the website, because honestly, I feel like that gets more traffic. Um, we're on Instagram, but I don't really do much with it because I don't really know how to work it that well thinking about tiktok tiktok is weird and kind of obnoxious and annoying but they are legitimate companies um getting on there using it so i'm thinking if there are actually like actual adult people doing stuff on it the little 15 second weird things uh then maybe i could join uh that or maybe i could do 15 second silly stuff at savage game who, who knows anyway so maybe i should get on there um and the YouTube tra channel is, you you know, I've got 83 subscriber subscribers. I don't really promote it. That, that, that's okay. I obviously don't get a lot of traffic. Uh, I get an okay amount of views here and there. Maybe a like or two if I'm lucky or, or three likes. By the way, if you do like my content, please like it. I know it seems like whatever to thumb up, but apparently it helps the algorithm of YouTube. That's what all the YouTubers say. I actually, I mean, I kind of understand it, but I I don't understand it in great detail, but I'm a smart enough guy to know that that stuff does matter. It does figure into the algorithm. It does figure into the system. Uh, so yeah, just keep that in mind. So yeah, so here are adventures um, kind of got behind, got a little burned out, but also because I had other work that was paying me a lot more and I had to kind of cover for the wife losing one of her jobs. The good thing is she has now gotten back into a more steady job that still allows her to do acting gigs and, and other stuff. She also teaches after school class, you know, classes like that, stuff like that. She and I are all over the place. Um, but weirdly enough, we kind of like that, that sort of gig life, you know, but we're, we're got kind of used to it. That's why we have cats as pet. We have two cats. Um, cats take care of themselves a little bit better than dogs. I like dogs as well, but they just don't take care of themselves with, with, uh, as much as cats do. Looking over at my cats. It's funny as I start, talking about them they're looking i'm not even using their names uh, uh so that is why we have them because they kind of take care of themselves and they're awesome i love them uh next thing is red sun let's say i touched on it briefly so that may or may not get kickstarted next year maybe it may because i feel like i'm behind in this one i'm kind of embarrassed and a little, little bit about it i'm afraid some people might be like oh that's the dude that was like two or three months behind the last project i don't know if i'm gonna uh front his uh his next one uh, so we'll we'll see. Um, the good thing is my tracker record's pretty good. I think this is my seventh Kickstarter um, or eighth, maybe I don't know. Uh, and every single one of them has been on time. I think well, I think one was maybe like a month behind. But in the Kickstarter world, that's on time apparently. Given most uh, content makers tend to be, it's just human nature. I think tend to be you know, just slightly, slightly behind time. Uh, but the, the other six times I, I've been like right on the nose. And in fact, even one, one or two that finished like a month before we thought. So, so I feel good overall, but I do feel bad that I'm a little bit behind on this one, but I am working at, uh, like I said, I'm about 60% done. And then I would have to turn it over to my craft designer, probably use, uh, uh, Michael Scott Phillips again, who did the, uh, the cover to this book and the Savage East, which is over there, but I'm not going to grab it right now because you guys have seen it. Maybe if not, check it out. The second book in the Savage Kingdoms third edition line, that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, other stuff going on is acting stuff. I'll just kind of skip because I, I tried to do, I tried to make this channel about acting uh, and about uh, gaming, but it's such a small following. I think it's not, and it's mostly gamers. So I, I don't hardly do the acting stuff much anymore, but 
since that is a part of my life and I consider it quite important. Um, and to me, weirdly, I know this doesn't make sense to a lot of gamers, uh, but to me, performing arts we interweaves almost directly to tabletop role playing game in my mind because I approach a lot of it very similar as far as character building and world building and, and even doing accents and uh, uh, just character building in general and character through lines and all and all that actory storytelling stuff. So to me, it actually kind of directly relates, which is why I wanted to combine the, the two on the channel. So anyway, uh, I do have some cool some gigs coming up. I'm actually uh, first rehearsal tonight for a big Christmas show um, at a professional, professional theater here in Western North Carolina. Uh, and then I just closed a one act festival a couple of days ago or a day, two days ago. Sure. And the wife had a murder mystery dinner theater show, blah, blah, blah. So anyway, I'm staying busy with that. So just to kind of let you know, um, the days that I am not writing heroic adventures, I am actually do, usually doing stuff. I'm on an audition or a, a rehearsal or actually an actual performance. Um, so yeah, it, this little, um, uh, did a independent film that I was doing really is kind of a favor to a friend. Like his production company is really awesome, but it's, uh, they're local, kind of small, super talented. They could be doing major big stuff. Uh, so I accepted this role for basically nothing. Um, and, uh, and it's now like winning a lot of, uh, awards overseas in different, uh, independent film festivals. So I think we've already won like three or four awards, including best in show. I think we won was the one in Tokyo or at least the over some overall award. Uh, so that's kind of cool. That's been exciting because that means there might be more of those movies or maybe even a bigger uh, uh, distribution company picks up that movie um, or, or that franchise. It's actually based on a uh, children's book franchise. So, uh, so yeah, maybe, who knows? Maybe that'll, that'll work and I can continue playing this uh, villain inside the book. Spoilers. Um, well, not inside the book, behind the movie. I'm not playing the villain in the book, actually, unless they hire me to do a reading of the... Never mind. Uh, so anyway, uh, so that's going on, um, producing, directing something coming up in January. I don't know why I'm doing this and, uh, it feels good. Uh, it felt kind of, felt weirdly awesome. Um, and hi kitty, you heard me talking about you, didn't you? This is my cat voice, cat voice. Uh, what else is it going to mention? Ramble, 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 blah, blah, blah. Acting stuff, blah, blah, blah. Uh, game design stuff, blah. Let's see. Blah, blah, blah. What else is I going to talk about? No script here, guys. I'm just winging it, per usual. And I don't edit these things. Because I think they're kind of funny and more entertaining when they're not editing, uh, edited, honestly. Um, and I'm too lazy to do it. So, I, I guess that's going to be it. I felt like there was a third thing I was going to talk about. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, well, I, uh, yeah. I'll, why not? So I'm thinking about designing, uh, and I'm actually already working on a Savage Kingdoms LARP live action role playing game. And I told myself years ago that I was not, I wasn't going to LARP anymore. I used to do it a long time ago when I was younger and more athletic and better shape. And, you know, the physical fighting was, was awesome. Um, and then in the role playing stuff, even better. Um, you know, I could do the overnight events and blah, 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 and I stay up all night and all that stuff. But now it's just, I was just burned out on it a long time ago. I designed a couple LARPs. Uh, one I sold to someone, so I actually made a little bit of money on it, uh, a sci-fi LARP, actually. I ran a Middle Earth LARP down in Atlanta called Elfstone, um, which got, had some local praise about it. But I didn't make any money on that because it was Tolkien Enterprises uh, property. I even let them know it was happening. I never heard back from them. I, they probably just didn't care. Small little LARP in Atlanta, um, in the Atlanta area, and the the fee, the game fees are really cheap. It was just we were just running it on just enough budget to buy props and like some food for the event or whatever. So they probably didn't really care. I did let I let them know just to cover my bases though. Uh, Lori Battle actually from the uh, uh, from the New Line uh, go between licensed persons. I don't even know if she's. Uh, even involved anymore, but with Tolkien Enterprises. So anyway, um, so after all of that, running those two LARPs, because I did run, uh, before I sold the sci-fi one, I did run it for two years, year and a half, something like that. And, uh, you know, got busy with, like, with, with uh, my, the acting career was picking up more um, after that, and I just got burned out and just didn't really have time for it. But now, now that my life is, I was about to say more settled down, it's actually not, uh, but I have, I'm a little older and wiser and kind of have a better grasp of how to manage everything. 
I might be able to um, slide in an event. So anyway, just explain what the LARP is, the, the live action role playing, obviously is what it stands for. And it would be Savage Kingdoms. Um, same world, uh, a very condensed rule system to, that is easier to do in the moment and LARP wise, uh, where you're not slowed down too much. Uh, so it wouldn't be the full rule. I'm already working on it. In fact, I might make it more of a D6 thing instead of a D20. Uh, it may not even have dice at all. Like a lot of, a lot of, most LARPs don't even use dice. The other ones I designed didn't use dice. There was all, it's all a verbal system. And, uh, you know, you got a card with all your character stats if you needed it. Most people remember, memorize what everything was. Uh, and then if it, uh, they were buffer LARPs too. So, you know, padded latex weapons. So that had a combat system. That was kind of fun. So this one that I'm going to do is more of a, a, what would be called a parlor LARP, a parlor room LARP or a room LARP or indoor LARP. So it's more of a, it would be done like maybe conventions, maybe Dragon Con or maybe some of the local conventions here in North Carolina, Mace or uh, even Scarefest, the, the little one, but awesome one here in Asheville. Um, that sort of saying, we got somebody coming to my door there. I'm just going to randomly wave to the UPS driver as he sits on my package, actually FedEx. So, um, so yeah, it's going to be more of a parlor LARP uh, if I, you know, if I do it at all, but I am working on it because there are a couple of my players that were like, hey, that's kind of cool. There's literally only like two or three people that say that it's going to be, have been wanting one, want it. So maybe when it's out, other people will kind of like it, but it's not going to be a big deal. It's just going to be something there to maybe run on an occasional event, um, you know, maybe twice a year, three times a year at a convention. And the point being is that um, promotional, pr pr promotionally speaking, people will see the logo more. They'll see it like, it's, oh, it's Savage Kingdoms. Um, I might have heard of that game. Kind of cool. If not, let's, hey, let's check it out, see what they're doing. And um, hopefully if the players have cool costumes and the rule system is decent enough to support some of the stuff going on, uh, I know the world's detailed enough. So I'm not worried about that then people might be like, oh, that looks pretty cool. And oh, by the way, there's a tabletop role-playing version of it that existed way before. Let's check that out. It's only run on a single D20. It sounds like it's really fast. And oh, wow, it was kind of a gritty sort of world. That's kind of cool. I'm a little, little tired of over-the-top high fantasy. A gritty world of Dark Ages fantasy sounds cool, as I just read the blurb off the top cover. Uh, so yeah, so it's, a, it's I have another medium for the game. Um, and LARPing can be fun. It, you know, I was super into it a long time ago. Um, but mostly it's to kind of have a little promotional event during a convention or some other thing, uh, event like that. So um, the last thing I'll mention about the LARP is, so I used to be super into the buffer LARPs, like I mentioned, and, and SCA and medieval reenactments and that stuff, kind of stuff. And I still like that stuff, definitely. Um, but as I'm, I'm a little bit older now, not that I couldn't do some of them. I'm in rel fortunately relatively decent shape. I do, and I do fight choreography and stage combat, that's kind of stuff, but I just don't really, I don't know. It's just, uh, buffer LARPs are too, there's a little too much at risk. And <laughs> I remember running some, like literally I just, you know, we had padded arrows and everything would say, everything was fine. But as a younger guy, I just, I just didn't really, I was like, yeah, it'll be fine. But now that I'm older and I, I'm like, man, there's some stuff. I, I don't think we got really lucky that nobody really got hurt. <laughs> Not only the ones that I designed, but some of the other ones I played. Uh, so, yeah. Um, I mean, what event at night somebody broke their leg in two places from running? And it wasn't even really in the, the battle. It was the fact that it was an overnight LARP at night and they was running from the woods. Um, so what is it even like a combat-related thing? And I think it was actually running from combat, like some wolves some kind of creatures or something came after him or whatever but uh so to avoid all of that i just think it might be more fun to do a i'm working on a system a combat system if combat does break out during these parlor larp events if they happen um i'm going to do a a, a turn-based system i believe i'm going to at least try it we're going to play test it um hopefully we'll get around to doing that at some point to where if combat if, if a combat scene happens we're going to call a, a hold or a time stop and then everything's going to go in a turn-based thing hopefully very fast um either settled with uh a level or number based system that's spoken verbally uh or maybe with a giant d6 uh, i've got these big foam d6s I also have these foam d20s uh that you can the game uh, game master can 
role can, you know, referee would come up on the scene and, and do all the dice stuff if I choose to do the dice method instead of some of the old traditional ways of doing LARP stuff. I'm not doing paper, rock, paper, scissors. I find that to be silly, honestly, especially when you can do something a little more detailed that's not any slower. And it use, utilizes more of a, an actual game system. So, um, but anyway, that's my thoughts on that. It would be, uh, and it may not may not be that cool at all. It might be. It might be a, a thing where you resolve the combat instantly instead of time based. Although I think you're kind of losing a lot of story there. Speaking of uh, right now, as a fight choreographer, uh, a combat and whatever in a, in a movie or in a, a theatrical production, or whatever that is a story in itself. And so if you skip through it. Right to the end, you kind of miss some of the story, unless that scene specifically exists to start a new scene at the end of what would have been the battle. So in other words, there has to be a reason for it. So having that in mind, again, I'm rambling, um, the combat system might be more of a turn-based thing instead of like, okay, just do a single roll between you guys. Uh, yep, you're the winner. Because then, then what do you do? It's like, well, was the loser wounded? Was the winner? What happened? So we want to know what happened in the story. So if you play out some combat rounds, just like in tabletop role-playing, you know in a more detailed account what actually happened to that character. Did the character get wounded? Did the character was, uh, to gain a trophy item off of his defeated opponent or whatever? So that's me rambling for 21 minutes. Um, I think that's it. I just wanted to, in a nutshell... Heroic Adventure is still working on. I'm a little bit behind, but it's coming. Thanks to the Kickstarter people for hanging in there. I apologize for being behind. Red Sun, kind of still working. Not sure about it. I might go a little further with the Savage Kingdoms game line with the new LARP coming up, if I do it. Uh, and I might, I'm even looking at maybe writing some novels out of this world using the Savage Kingdoms logo, since it's already kind of known, uh, and that kind of thing. So just want to let you guys know where I am. And um, I'm about to got to get ready to head off to this rehearsal that I, that I teased earlier at the top of the video. So thanks for hanging in there. Like, subscribe, all that stuff. And I'll talk to you guys again soon. Bye.